Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I am going to launch a whole bunch of resupply vessels. Basically I want to get food, water, and oxygen to all the places that need it and we won't be actually transferring them all at the same time but I want to get them into orbit so that I have them ready for transfer later. And uh, so the first thing is obviously Mooner Station 1 needs to be resupplied in four days, that's the most pressing thing. But we also need to send some supplies over to Duna. We might as well take advantage of the Dredge transfer, send some supplies over there with a scanner. Uh, maybe, maybe I will combine the two, so the resupply will carry the scanner with it. And uh, then we see that uh, we have a Carbonite mining station. This one will remain in orbit around Kerbin until it needs to be transferred. Uh, and then uh, Kerbin Station Core. We don't need the same vehicle for Kerbin Station Core. We could add more food, water, and oxygen and reduce the amount of fuel for that because for Duna and the Moon, the fuel requirements are about the same. For Drez, we need more fuel. Maybe we should separate the scanner and the, and the supplies in that case. And uh, the Kerbitat, we'd have to wait. That's a different sort of vehicle that requires a lander. These will have the same sort, same general sort of vehicle. Uh, so that's the idea. So uh, let's say one, let's send two to Duna just as backup. So two, three, uh, probably five launches there. I mean, uh, there's two more launches there. So five, uh, six, and then uh, modified one for a current station core seven. So lots of launches to do. Uh, some of them will look the same. Some of them will have minor modifications and we'll take care of at least uh, Mooner Station 1 supply transfer this time. Okay, so with that let's go to the VAB. Okay, so this is the basic resupply vehicle that I'm going to use and we've got a small docking port up there and a large one here just to make it agnostic on that score. Um, we've got RCS obviously. The RCS tanks are only half full. Actually, let's, let me make that. Uh, no, I can't get it precise, can it? Never likes to go to halfway. But anyway, uh, we've got three of these life support tanks, food, water, and oxygen. Hopefully that'll be enough for all our needs. And just in case, because it's tough to... We've got a lot of uh, Kerbals around Duna. I will send two of these over there. But for Mooner Station 1, we definitely only need one. Now, uh, so it uh, its cost is uh, 21400 on its own. Uh, so that's pretty expensive. This is the transfer stage here. It's very small. Just a procedural liquid tank and one of these LVT-95. I wonder if that's too expensive for this purpose. It's 1900 which is pretty expensive compared to the LV-909. Then again, the LV-909 won't look quite as good here, but we can use we can use a furring adapter instead. It's lighter. Yeah, it, it's actually better. I'll do this. Unfortunately, the thrust to weight ratio will be a bit low, but I guess we can manage that. Okay, so instead of having just uh, straight up the coupler like this, I'll have an interstage furring adapter. Might be a little bit heavier to do that. Okay, I don't see that that causes any problems. Now, because it's on the Strider XL, it does have this odd shape to it. So, yeah, uh, it's all balanced on this tiny little SRB. But Delta V wise, it's fine. It's got enough for a transfer and everything. And it's got enough for a Duna transfer. Maybe we, we could add a little bit more. I don't think it's overburdening the the Strider SL. Six minute burn sounds nice. Okay, but then uh, the payload itself has 1,328. It's facing backwards right now, but we'll just say control from the senior docking port if necessary. As it gets close to its destination, we'll use RCS anyway. And yeah, it's got that because I don't necessarily want to error brake with it. And so we might get into manual orbit around Duna instead of error braking. It seems like a safer thing to do. Obviously, we'll need some fuel to get into orbit around the moon, but not that much. This could also be used to resupply any Minmus base uh, in orbit, so that's good too. I forget if I need to needed to arm the parachutes beforehand before uh, having stage recovery recover it. Maybe, in which case I should probably action group that. But it wasn't action group to begin with. It's been a while since I've launched stuff. We've mostly been dealing with stuff already launched, 
and getting them into their proper position. But anyway, mid-range resupply, this is not capable of uh, resupplying Jewel or Moho or Elu. But otherwise for Eve, anything around Kerbin, and for Duna, and possibly Drez, I think this is okay. If we uh, shorten up the... Uh, if we have less food, water, and oxygen for Drez. But uh, definitely Eve, Kerbin, and Duna. Alright, so let's test launch it, and we'll send this one over to Munder Station 1. Okay, here we go. We've got uh, warnings up. Carbonite Mining Station warning as well. So uh, let's get to it. SAS on. Thrall is up. And uh, yeah, again, we're going to recover the booster. And that'll save us about 14,000 funds. Here we go. It's definitely up to capacity. Okay, we are now past the speed of sound. Everything is looking good. 15 seconds left in the SRB stage. Or actually, that might be the little vernier thrusters I've got there. The Rock Max 2477s. Okay, SRB still going. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay, well, it's in the hands of stage recovery now. That's logistics. I haven't actually used the logistics manager. Don't know much about it. Hmm. Stage re recovered already? Wow, that was quick. That was very quick. How does it know already? Actually, 17,000 funds refunded. Hmm. Okay. Should have had the fairing in four parts, that seems to be safer, but I think we can eject the fairing now. It's not that long stage. Yeah. Let's not have that staging go at the same time as those engines since they're facing the wrong way. Not a good idea. Okay, coasting to apoapsis. I'll allow this stage to re-enter. I hope uh, being under 30 kilometers will do the trick. And set. Separation. And ignition. And let's complete orbit. Solar panels out. The vehicle looks a little bit weird like this, but not too bad. I'm, I'm definitely overdoing it with the solar panels, but there's sort of something that's going to become a fixture on a station, so might as well have it uh, supply the station with some extra power, if it can. I mean, it depends on where it's located on the station. Sometimes it might not be able to extend its solar panels for fear of knocking into something else. Okay, that's good enough. 123 by 120. And let us plot for the moon. Okay, so here's our transfer. We, we probably have too much fuel for this sort of thing, but uh, we'll carry some extra fuel over to the station. The b good thing is that since we're always going to be docking with the station, we could just resupply the station with fuel if we're carrying too much. We're not going to have to uh, waste it or bring it back. Now, uh, double checking whether uh, we are going in the same direction as as our real target, which is Mooner Station 1. Send us target. Okay, uh, we seem to be uh, coming in this way and going out that way, so uh, prograde orbit. And Mooner Station 1 also appears to be going in a prograde orbit, so that's fine. We really need to get the Minmus mining operation to help us out with refueling stuff, though. That's uh, sort of point number two, but right now we can't uh, resupply things from with food, water, and oxygen from any other source except for Kerbin. We could probably do water, obviously, we've done some of that. Maybe maybe oxygen is a thing, but uh, food is not. We'd have to have some sort of greenhouse, but that's down the road. I haven't gotten those working on the moon right now, and uh, we definitely don't have anything like that on Minmus. 
Here we go. Oop, I underestimated the time necessary for burn, so... Okay, well, anyway, I'll be back with you once this is done. Actually, before I forget, let me rename this Mooner Station 1 Resupply. Just to be absolutely clear about it. Okay. And let's get lights on. So we've got one light facing the docking side, if it's going to dock at that port, and another one facing this way to shine on the vehicle. Okay, let's just get this close, and right there will be fine, 40 kilometers, that's excellent, and come on, get rid of that, okay, uh, alarm clock, let's add an alarm for this one, that's a uh, SOI change, and then we can take care of it then, but uh, in the five hours we've got, we can launch plenty of stuff, so let's not waste any time, let's get to work on that. Just a quick recap of how many Kerbals we actually have deployed. You know, we only have one Kerbal available right now, Dunzer Kerman. Uh, speaking of which, maybe we should pick a few up. Dudeball Kerman, Edfree Kerman, uh, Gregfurt Kerman, Richlock Kerman, Harming Kerman, and Nelbert Kerman. And that'll give us seven. Assigned, we have 39. One lost, of course, Jeb. <laughs> But uh, 39, one in Mooner Station, Kerbin Station Core, Kerbatat, 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 Duna, 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 so three, let's see how many Dunas we have, because uh, that's important, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so that's seven around Duna, and then the gold bugs, that's on the moon, moon, and then two on Explorer X, Minmus, 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 Minmus. So that's four on Minmus. Oh, and the Bowinkle A Moose is a little bit complicated because it's a ship. Bowinkle B Moose. That the Bowinkle A Moose, I think, was. I want to say that that. No, 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 that's all Minmus stuff. So lots on Minmus. And then Drez, we've got a few. And then Jewel, we've got a few. So, yeah. For those who uh, didn't know our full deployment, we've got quite a lot of Kerbals out there to feed and supply so gotta keep track of all that so I thought the previous launch went very well and we got the SRB back so that was good in surprisingly short amount of time so I'll just go with this arrangement for the Duna transfers as well don't see any reason not to and that should be good enough for us and I'll just remember to rename them we won't make the Duna transfers yet since we're a little bit early for that but let's get them into orbit Okay, so two launches of this for Duna, and I'll try and uh, keep the video portion of that short. After this one, the only one that doesn't really require any modification will be the Carbonite Mining Station, station launch. I don't think we'll get to that or the Carbon Station Core one today, and we've got 90 days for that, so we don't have to hurry. The stuff I want to do is the stuff to Duna and the stuff to Drez, and don't worry, we, we're going to be sending other stuff to Duna and Drez as well, not just not just these resupply missions. I'll be doing many more Duna launches in the next episode. I have to build them and think carefully about what I want to send. I want to look at the situation around Duna to see what they need, but obviously they'll need supplies, so that's the first thing to get underway. So uh, here we go. Now I do keep the launch vertical for an extended period of time because the thrust weight ratio is so low and uh, so we we have a somewhat odd ascent profile for fair mirror space not exactly a normal thing I, I do keep it pretty steep during the SRB stage and that's mainly because it never gets to particularly high thrust weight ratios on this stage I think I ought to upgrade this launcher. It's capable of much more than 18 tons to out the low curve in orbit, which is what I initially said it at. Probably can do 20 at least, given the amount of fuel that we have left over. And if we're going to launch it, we might as well bring the extra fuel up, if only to uh, send it to some location or extra supplies of any kind to fill the space. 
since this stage we normally want to dump anyway, we're not going to recover it. Might as well put some more payload on. Okay, just the SRB. Separation. And ignition. Thought we had payload fairing, uh, I mean, uh, st structural fairings on that so it wouldn't collide with the stage. Maybe, maybe my subassembly doesn't have those right. I might have to replace those so that it doesn't uh, cause problems for the SRB recovery. I don't know though. Still got some. Oh, that that must be the launch clamps or something. Yeah, it, it seems to recover that SRB before it gets anywhere close to the ground. Funny. And we get good value from it because it's so close to the KSC, only 7.72 kilometers. Now that was the upper stage that we lost. Obviously not recoverable. The skipper stage. Well, at least it did re-enter properly and get uh, removed from the game, if you will. This is a pretty cluttered up save already. We've got like 60... this is probably the 66th flight in progress. If we take a look here, 147 pieces of debris that aren't being shown if I show them. I wonder if they'll hate me for it. I get the feeling it really doesn't want to show me those. Probably for the best. Nope. Okay, let's cut uh, 130 kilometers. We'll head to Apoapsis. I'm getting it pretty high here. But that's all the better to finish off this stage instead of wasting the fuel completely. Okay, that's under 30 kilometers and set. And completing orbit. So panels out. Okay, that's fine. We don't need the periapsis side to be high up. Let us rename this. Duna resupply. Oops. Not a very good day for typing for me. Okay. Very good. Uh, let's get another one into orbit. Okay, so one more for Duna. This will be the last launch of this particular resupply ship in this configuration. The next two launches, well, last one in this episode. The next two launches we'll want to do are for Drez, and that'll need more range, and so we'll probably dump some of the food, water, and oxygen, replace it with fuel, and then we also need to put a scanner on one. Alright, so uh, throttle is up, SAS is on, and let's go. Okay, 2477s are out. Preparing for stage separation. Stage set. Oh, I forgot to replace those fairings. Ignition. Okay, I think we can go ahead and do fairing separation. Once again, the SRB has been recovered. We were further downrange this time. But all is well. No indication that the previous skipper stage was lost yet, though. Hasn't come up with that message, I think, unless I I deleted. No, I don't think I deleted it. No. So it hasn't popped up with that. I guess that hasn't even re-entered yet. Okay, while we're on our way up, I'm going to rename this. If I can get between the batteries. So, uh, Duna Resupply 2.
Okay, 28 kilometers there. Quote unquote saved more fuel this time, but it wasn't necessary. Let's just set. Green nav light. Let's see. Flash. Yeah, let's go with flash. That's good. I didn't even set the other ones. Maybe, oh, what about just light on that side? Okay. Let's stop there. Uh, 134 by 116. And we'll let hold until we can transfer it. Alright, back to the Space Center. Now I have noticed that we do have a lot of science here so let me take a look at the R&D building and see how we can deploy that before we launch anything else so we have some possibilities um, here we can finally unlock the gravioli surely we should do that that's uh, been a long time coming uh, we've also got an altimetry sensor though we don't necessarily need that um, these are just really big rover wheels I think here we have experimental electrics, which basically just means more solar arrays. But we don't have enough of that. Well, we do, but uh, I don't want to spend it like that. Uh, that's just bigger fairings and experimental rocketry. Taking a look here, got the cupola module, lander can. Funny, I thought we... well, I guess that was something else. Okay, they'll probably be asking us to put cupola modules on stations in the contracts if we get that. Probodobodyne Octo, that's about it. I really don't need the mech jab features. Well, we've got the uh, better winches here. And uh, the infamous cubic octagonal strut. I suppose that could be useful. Well, the blue winches in particular, I haven't really been using KAS much. But yeah, okay, so uh, let's get the gravioli. And let's get the, the winches and the cubic octag. And let's see here. Ah, electromagnet we would get if we had, we had 1,000 more. That's very good. And larger docking ports it looks like. I don't know what size that is. I suppose it must be 3.75 meter. I'm not sure. Okay, well anyway we've deployed some of that. Uh, we'll hold on to the rest. We won't get these just yet. Okay, let's go ahead and see what to do about Drez. So I think I'll start off with uh, building the scanner is the most important thing. And so here we've got the planetary, planetary survey camera. And if you look at the KA-100 detection array, the reason I got fooled, I guess, is because it says capable of scanning for high concentration of carbonite and other resources. And so I thought it would cover some of the other resources. Actually, it only scans for carbonite. So, um, well, this says find likely deposits of very various crustal resources. Also, uh, the detection array seemed a little bit less cheaty. It's uh, got a mass of 0.05. This one's got a mass of 0 0.001, which is a little bit weird. I think uh, it's got to be a little bit heavier than that, right? But anyway, um, we could put other scanning things on board. But they're very expensive, like this altimetry sensor is 25,000. We've already got this altimetry sensor, I think, over there. But this is 13,000, this is 9,000. That's, that's all very expensive. And I don't think I want to waste that kind of stuff on Drez. Now, we've got to get a training academy. That would be good. But definitely not around Drez. So let's just focus on Drez. And the training academy, we need to really add to our... Kerbin Station Core is what we re what we want to do with that, but let's discuss that when we resupply that maybe maybe we'll add the supplies to this and launch it to the station, if I can remember to do that. All right, so let me build this. Make sure it has enough delta v. Uh, probably the Strider SL will be overdoing it, but we might as well use it. Um, it's just straightforward. But let me uh, put this together. Okay, so what I've decided is that using the Strider SL will be super overkill in this case. So instead I've developed a smaller version, the Super Super Light, and what we've got here is the probe. It alone in this tank with this little engine has uh, about, well, close to 2,000 meters per second of delta V. It's got a kick stage with 4,000. I think this is enough to get to Drez. I mean, uh, whatever Drez can throw at us in weird 
weird orbital situations and need to slow down. I think this is enough. And uh, it's also enough to uh, head over to Jewel and do stuff like that, which I also intend to do. I've called the Probe Scanner Pro, and hopefully this is a very, very pro scanner. Uh, so yeah, this is the idea. Uh, there, there are batteries hidden by the solar panels, by the way. We've got the sol uh, these always open solar panels just in case. Uh, antennae just in case. I thought about putting on the Gravioli detector, but the Gravioli is $8,800 all on its own. The probe right now is only 6300 so I'm going with a light version. We'll have a dedicated science ship instead of having that on this probe, otherwise I'll forget about it. Uh, the probe, th this scanner is meant to be uh, put it into orbit and forget about it, so it'll do its scanning thing and we don't have to bother with it. I don't want to have to add something that I need to, you know, uh, uh, turn back to whenever I get a contract to get some science, right? I want to have a science ship for that sort of thing. Okay, so yeah, kick, kick stage, and then instead of a skipper, obviously, that would be too much, we have an LV-909, and then the, uh, it's still a recoverable booster, uh, but, and of course, if I had the original booster, I could get it all the way into orbit just with that booster without having a second stage. The problem is, deadly reentry should be destroying it on the way back down. Uh, it would get too far to orbit. And so, what I have to figure is that I don't want it to go so far, and so in that case I've decided to shorten this up. It has much less thrust than it used to. Um, in fact I'm gonna reduce that a little bit. And uh, let me reduce the burn time. Yeah, okay. So I'm still making tweaks to this. Not sure if it's gonna work out for us exactly right. And uh, not sure still that this is really a recoverable arrangement as far as deadly reentry is concerned, but uh, we'll see first whether stage recovery has an issue with it, and then I'll uh, think about whether deadly reentry is really happy with this sort of thing or not. Okay, I'm in sort of a hurry, so I want to get this on with. Let me just double check that I've got talk. Okay, so uh, so panels are on action group one. Okay. So let's get fairings on, save, and then we will launch this. Okay, here we go. This is looking sort of ICBM-ish. Uh, doesn't make me feel great about it, but hey, uh, if it works, it works. Let's find out. Throttle is up, SAS is on, and this is going to have quite a thrust to weight ratio. So let's get ready and go. Up, we've got the fairing staging along there. Okay, we're already above the cloud layer. We are past the speed of sound. That was quick. Mm, it's not correcting properly. I mean, the power of the Verniers hasn't changed. It's just the relative power of the SRB compared to the mass of the rocket. Oh, this stage alone is going to get us to our apoapsis. And probably a bit more than I'd like. Obviously, can't shut it off. So we're going to end up a bit high here. Actually, most of the way to orbit. I don't know if daily reentry would normally have an okay time with this, but let's find out if stage recovery is okay with it. Come on. Okay. And fairings. Well, we really don't need to burn until apoapsis now. Okay, well, it's away. I don't know what's going to happen to it. Whoa, it's already... Oh. 
Oh, that's that's a skipper stage from before. That's not the stage we just had. Okay, it's going well. That was really really quick. All right, still got suspense about that stage. Here, our velocity does not seem so much. We're gonna take some time to get up to speed here. Maybe should have started out a little bit earlier. We'll uh, keep the LV-99 stage, it'll start us out on our trip to Drez, I guess. We are already going down, so maybe I should pitch up a little bit. Okay. We don't have to go too high on the periapsis. That'll do. 172 by 100. Still no word about the the SRB stage. I wonder if maybe Delhi Reentry did get it. Gonna keep time warping. Oh no no wait we've got uh, stage recovery. Okay well uh, stage recover the stage was recovered and I assume for its full value it cost less because the SRB was smaller. Okay, well that works as far as that's concerned. At one point we'll need to follow it down to see what really happens with it. Okay, so uh, this, I'm just going to rename it and be a little bit uh, more specific. Trez Scanner Pro. Uh oh, bit of stickiness there. Okay, alright, uh, so we've done a few launches. I think I'm going to call it here with the test of a somewhat new rocket and I'll proceed with other things next time. Oh, the reason I'm not uh, going any further is because I haven't built the stuff for Duna yet and I want to get that stuff built and launched before proceeding with anything else. So, uh, Drez, I don't know if I need to resupply or not. I'll take a look at its food, water, and oxygen situation the, for the Kerbals over there and see whether I really need to launch something for them. Uh, and we might uh, pack that in with something else. So far we've got this probe that we really needed and so that is the most important thing to send over to Drez. Alright, I think that about says it all. So, uh, tune in next time for the rest of our Duna reinforcements. And if you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.